Now, welcome to part 28 of the uh, adventure game with multiple languages. We're, day, we're in Python and this is the final uh, one of the series for the Python side of things. Uh, so I've made a few changes, cosmetic mostly, uh, to the uh, layout. So, uh, And we've also introduced um, the ability to craft things. And there's a new class called Debug Display, which uh, helps to um, take some of the uh, debugging stuff out of the main uh, code here. So I'll just play it through so you can see what the differences uh, are. So let's get this out of the way. So this um, has now got these kind of um, lines above and below it just to kind of make it look a bit smarter. Uh, I don't want to disable that. Uh, now we've got the two files that we had before and this time the school.txt load, loads in perfectly. So we'll just use that one. Uh, as you can see, we've got this uh, screen which shows the dictionary shared items. And these are some of the objects that are being created for this particular uh, game. So we've got the name, the type of object, so these are all items at the moment, how many uses it has. Uh, and what it's crafted from. So for example, the sharp pencil down here is crafted from a blunt pencil and a pencil sharpener, which of course is this item up here. Let's press the next screen. So now we've got some down here that are of type weapon, and that's a wire and a hundred lines. So uh, these, the wire is crafted from pliers and a coat hanger and the hundred lines is crafted from a sharp pencil and paper. Okay, so the shared enemies, we've just got um, the playground bully, strength and health 50, and he drops a padlock key. And there's the description, sloppy dresser chewing gum, a real meanie, especially as he has to do a hundred lines by the end of the day. So just bear that in mind. Uh, so that's the... Um, items and these are the uh, locations of course uh, I won't go through those you can see these two two screens of those and so we're finally now about to play so we'll choose our character as before so a slightly different introduction because we're no longer dealing with a dungeon so Here's the newer layout. It's been tidied up so that we've got the the name of the location here, then the description across here. And if it's a long description, it will drop down another line without messing up anything down here. It tells you what's in this location, then the menu, full, full width this time, and then the number of your choice. So um, what I want to do this time is to um, I won't step through every single thing, but I just want to pick up the pencil sharpener. So that's now in my hand, and we'll pick up the key. Oh, no, shall I just investigate the key? So it says an old rusty key. Looks like the sort you use for a cupboard, so I guess that's going to be useful. So we take the key, and now we can go north to the cupboard, which would be good. And in the cupboard, we've got a coat hanger and some paper. So we'll take both of those. I won't bother to go through the descriptions. Okay, now we can go south. Uh, and we'll go south again to the stairwell. And we'll take the pliers. Uh, now we can open the inventory. So you'll see the uh, inventory has now been changed. It's got inventory, the amount of health that the player's got, and choose your option. So um, we've now got a new option, which is if you've got something in your inventory, you can craft, if you've got sorry, more than one item in your inventory, you can craft a new item. So we're going to choose 11 and uh, choose the first item. So what we want to make is to turn our coat hanger into a wire using the pliers. So if we choose three and we choose four, it says you crafted a wire. 
Okay, so we've now got a wire in there. Um, let's make something else. Let's make... Um, let's use the wire and the paper to make a key retriever. So we've got four and three. We crafted a key retriever. Okay, so you'll notice that the um, the wire is still in there. The paper is still in there. But the pliers have gone because we've used them. We don't need them anymore. Um, so it, it does kind of remove items that are no longer required, which is quite handy. Uh, let's exit this menu. So now we can go south into the office. So we use the key retriever to enter the office and we'll take the blunt pencil and then we'll uh, again we'll go east to the playground. Now we've got the playground bully so the school playground a rough tarmac surface maybe doing something nice for the bully could make him less mean. Here's your playground bully so we can attack him. All right, let's attack him. And this time we've got a, before it used to pick uh, a weapon if there was one in your inventory. Now we have the option to choose. So it says choose your weapon. So we could use the wire. We could use the blunt pencil. Let's use the wire. Give him a good poke. Okay, you attack the playground bully with the wire, 10 damage points. And he attacks us inflicting 50. So that's probably not going to work. So let's open the inventory and we'll craft a new item and we'll use the pencil sharpener with the blunt pencil and we craft a sharp pencil and we'll craft a new item with that. So we're going to take the paper and the sharp pencil and we craft a hundred lines. Okay, let's exit that menu. We're going to attack the bully, but this time we're going to use the 100 lines. There we go. He's defeated and drops a padlock key. So we'll take the padlock key and now we can go south to the outside world and we are we're in the outside world we've escaped and standing in the streets better head for the bus stop that was quite an adventure etc etc so we're now at the end of the adventure so our only choice is to quit there we go so we've now got interaction with um choosing a weapon to attack enemies with and the ability to craft different items so that's as far as i wanted to go with this particular one so i'll just take you through some of the uh, code that was involved now i've made a list of what's been done in the main file here so uh, the keyboard we haven't really kind of looked at the keyboard it was just there and we used it um so i just made some minor changes in in that so let me just show you the keyboard library so uh, what we've done here is on the menu this is the one that draws the menu i've put these sort of ability to draw the lines around the menu and then depending on the length of each one we've uh, made some changes there to make sure it draws properly because i had the max length here was wrong before i had it nine and seven it should have been the same on both counts and also in the process input i've made it so that we clear three rows and then draw a single line above and below um, an, an empty space and then the user input is put into that empty space here by using set cursor pods so that we're um we're just improving that keyboard's um, output so that's something you can have a look at for uh, yourselves there uh, the next thing we've got this new class called debug display uh, what i've done in here is a static class as 
as before, uh, just importing the console shared and player, and then all the debug stuff that was uh, in the main code has been ported out to here. So the display items, display locations, and display enemies, and even the display player, I've removed it from the the player object itself. So that that's kind of much as it was, but moved out of its original place. Uh, the game, um, I've made some changes to the uh, loading in. Let me just get to the game folder. There he is. Right, uh, let's check what we did here. Um, file improvements and display debug for, okay, yeah. So let's go back to the game. The modify player is one of those that has now shifted over to the uh, debug display so that um, if shared debug we're now using debug display display player that's that one uh, load game hasn't changed load from file yeah what I've done here is I've added we already had two private variables here uh, sorry not variables um, functions here we've got a new one called reset which just basically can sends back a dictionary with these kind of um, keys and default values for them and that's so that when we're loading in the um, the data from our file we're using the dictionary to store the data in rather than just a, a, a long list of variables and also what we're doing is I've set this variable called completed to zero and every time we fill in an item from the dictionary completed is incremented so that when we get to uh, the bottom uh, here and everything's in the values and the uses and the container and all the stuff is it checks whether the number of completed items is five which would be a one two three four five items then it will add that item to the dictionary the advantage of doing it from this way is that it doesn't matter what order the lines are stored in in the text file here so it before it would wait until it got to the item container and once it got to container it knew okay that's the last of one two three four five properties now we can add it now you can put them in any order and it will only try and add it once all five have been put in so that was an improvement and that was because I had accidentally put um, something the wrong way around here and of course it didn't load properly so that was a way of, of uh, fixing that so uh, so that's what does there and then once you've added your um, item to the dictionary we reset the data so that it's back to an empty dictionary and then or not empty but you know with all the values reset and at the same time completed is reset to naught so that it can go through all the items all the enemies uh, and all the locations uh, with more more guaranteed to get them at the bottom here it's now using debug display items and enemies so that even if we're loading in from a file we can still check what we're loading in is it all working properly so if you're developing a new game using um, a text file you can check it out as you go to and this will help you to get it uh, running properly so that was uh, a new bit on the load from file there uh, was there anything new here? Let me just check back on the main by. Uh, the oh yes, the introduction and modify player just had um, some some sort of cosmetic uh, changes. So if we show you modify player first, uh, I think it was. I think it was mainly was just the debug for the player for that one. Uh, display intro okay there we go uh, yeah I've just made some modifications again to the appearance so that it filled 
across the entire width of the console. Um, and um, I've used this new thing in Shared, which is Format Line, uh, so that what we can do is if the if we if the description is several lines long, it'll make sure that it splits it into um, words that will fit in across the width of the screen without breaking a word. And if it needs more than one line, then it will print out two lines. So what we're getting is a list of lines from whatever it is that we're passing into it. Um, and, and that uh, helps to make it all look nice and neat. So that's in the shared one here. So we've got this um, format line, which will return um, a list of lines that will fit in to this particular length of, or width perhaps would have been a better word, width of console. And then you can also choose whether to put in a border, such as um, a UTF-8 character, or, or any other character for that matter. So um, that, that just helped to, um, to get the formatting correct. Uh, and then the print lines makes use of this format line but actually prints out the lines in a for loop, which is basically what was happening in, where were we, game here. So where I've, where I've put lines equals shared format line, I could actually substitute that for um, um, <clears throat> using the print lines. And then we don't need to run this loop because it's kind of built in. Um, so, uh, but I just wanted to leave that there as an alternative way of doing it. So you can either call lines equal shared format lines, or we could just simply put um, shared print lines, print lines, and then pass it the same thing, and it will do that uh, that job for us. Um, I suppose it might be useful to run that through. Yeah, let's do that. So we'll we'll run that through, and uh, you can see how it works. Let's go on to main. Right, so we're now about to display the introduction to our game. <clears throat> so the text that's been passed is, can you escape from school? So uh, it's now going to um, pass in uh, the, it's going for each string in intro text. Of course, there's only one line in intro text as it happens, but so we're obviously going to be passing in that string which is can you escape from school so let's pass it through but you'll notice that we've set up the border here as um, this uh, UTF-8 character so if we press the F11 so we're now inside uh, shared so the text is can you escape from school the length is 80 the border is this uh, UTF-8 character the align uh, hasn't been set, so it's obviously going to use center. Now, this is the UK spelling, of course. So we are now, uh, have got inside this format line, we've got this little uh, inbuilt uh, private function, and then we've got the rest of the function down here. So let's um, step through it. So it's gonna skip past that uh, private function for the moment. So we're creating an empty list, which is what we'll use to return our list of lines with. We've set up an empty string called filler. If the border is not equal to empty string, which it isn't because it's, e it's equal to a UTF-8 character, then we're going to reduce the length by two characters. So that if we're going to fill in an 80 character wide uh, console, then we want to knock off one each side character to make space for the border. So that's why the length has been reduced by two. Uh, the length of the text, if it's less than the length, then we don't need to do any kind of fancy stuff. We can just return that. Um, so we can, uh, the length of the text here 
it's, I haven't actually counted it, it's probably about 50 characters, and then the overall length is 78, so we know that it's going to return, append that straight to the our empty list. So if we press F11, so we're going to uh, append this pad line text align border. So it's now going to call this inner function up here and pass to it that text, can you escape from school, the center align, and the border character. So we'll press F11. So if the length of the text divided by 2 equals 1, then we're going to add an extra character to it. It's not, so we don't need to worry. Filler is empty string. Um, if the align equals center, which it is, then the filler is the length of the entire amount that we want to fill minus the length of the text. So let's say that's I know, 30, 40 characters, then it would give us 40 characters divided by 2 using the integer divide, hence the, the two divide signs there. Uh, and then just uh, justifying it with spaces to that amount. So we'll probably get about, say, 15, 20 spaces from that. So if I press F11, then the filler we can now see is indeed a group of spaces. Not sure how many is in there, maybe 10, 10 spaces. And then we're going to return the border which is our UTF-8 character, next to the filler, which is our spaces, next to the text, which is can you escape from school, next to the filler again, and finally the border. So that will return that string back to uh, down here. So let's press F11. And then of course, as that's now finished, we can just return that string, which as you can see is um, uh, our can you escape from school all enclosed in um, as, a, as a, a list item. Uh, if we had if the length of the text that we passed in was greater than the length of, in other words, say we put in um, a 200 characters, then it would split it up using this down here into different lines of a maximum of, in this case, 78 characters, and then return the list with those various lines in it. So now we've we've got that list here, which is can you escape from school inside a border? And then it's going for lines in lines print line. So we will now show you the in a moment we only got that top line. We're now going to print the next line. Can you escape from school in the middle? nice and neat and then print the box bottom so we've got that there okay so I just wanted to show you how that uh, works so we'll stop it at that point um, so the display intro was done there let's just remove that uh, just check on main what else did we do uh, the location Yes, we updated the display location in there. So let's find location. Right, let's see what we did here. I think it was something similar. Uh, yeah, here we are. Look, we've got row plus equals shared print lines for the description based on the width of the console with a left hand alignment and no border character. So we just, that's what fills in the, it leaves the borders at the sides completely blank and just puts the lines into a maximum of the 80 or whatever characters that we've chosen for the width. Um, and then prints, if it's longer than that, it prints it below as well. So that, that actually does that all automatically. Um, so that's how the display location has just been modified to allow that. All right, let's check the next thing. Um, so player attack updated. Oh yes, let's go to the player. Now the attack. Right, what we've done now is to pass in, we, we were passing just the location of where the attack was happening place, but now we're passing in the item that we've chosen to use from our menu. So if we had no nothing in our 
inventory, we would have been given the default fist. But as we have got an item, then it's given a default value of five. And then it checks to see whether the item passed in is a weapon. And if it is a weapon, then the damage is set uh, according to whatever damage that weapon has. Uh, and then the, the rest of it operates as normally. So it's just some mild changes up here for the player's attack one. Uh, next, shared format line and print line. Okay, now the weapon constructor, I did, in the last Python video, I did say, oh, um, I wonder if I was supposed to put in these things here, but it didn't s stop the game working, so I didn't think any more of it. But of course, when I tried to run it this time, because I hadn't passed in these items to the base class, uh, the loading in didn't work properly because the craft items weren't being sent in. So nothing received what it was supposed to be made of. And so by just putting them back in, so these three do need to go in uh, there, although it will work without them, it doesn't work properly. So that was the main change there. So that's it for the Python. Um, I hope this series has been of value to what I would suggest for further work would be perhaps to introduce another uh, subclass rather than weapon, say food. So that food is an item and then you can put food in various locations and food will give you health back. So that if you have several enemies, because I know most people when they start writing a game want to fill it full of enemies, um, if they start beating you up then you need to restore your health so having items of food around then you would need to add some form of in the main section here when when we're going through the play and take action ones uh, as i've got here action equals fight we could also have action equals uh, eat and then you could um it would only appear if you had food in your inventory you eat the food and your health goes up so uh, that's the sort of thing that you can do quite easily but uh, at least i've given you a good start and i'm pretty pleased with the way it's uh, looking now